Hi, I'm Vicky. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, then welcome. Um, if you're wondering what is going on with my hair, I'm trying the heatless robe curling method. It's the first time I've tried it. I did it last night about 6 p.m. I think, and it's now about 11 a.m. So at the end of this video, I am going to take this out and see what the results are. If my hair is up in a ponytail, then you know that it's gone wrong, but fingers crossed, it has worked. So I'm coming to you makeup free again, which means that this is a video where I'm going to be putting makeup on my face. And this video is going to be a full face of my cheapest makeup, and I've already done a full face of my most expensive makeup. So it's going to be interesting to see how this compares to my most expensive makeup, whether it's a case of you get what you pay for, or whether you don't actually have to spend a lot of money on makeup. So I'm interested to see how this is going to turn out. And I'm going to try to do a similar type of makeup as I did in my other video. So it's going to be bronzy, orange, copper. So I think that will allow for a fairer comparison in terms of how the makeup turned out. Okay, so my hair's up and I think I'm all ready to get started. So if we start with my cheapest lip balm, and that is Vaseline. I have put it into a little Primark tub because I don't know if anybody else agrees with me, but, but the metallic tin that Vaseline comes in, does anybody else find that really difficult to open? Or is it just me? So I've put it in one of these and this is a lot easier. So I'm just gonna put on a little bit of this and then we can get properly started. All right, cheapest primer is the primer that's in my Project Pan, so my Max Factor Smooth Miracle Primer. So if you've seen any of my previous videos, you know that I'm not the massive fan of primer, I'm not the most massive fan of primer rather, and I feel like there's not a difference between my more expensive primers and my cheaper primers. So my most expensive one was my Trini one, and I can't really see a difference between that one and this one. Okay, so whilst the face primer sort of sinks in, I'm gonna work on my eyes. So eye primer is the NYX eyeshadow base. I've never used this before, but to compare it immediately to the Urban Decay Primer Potion, this is a lot more beige, I guess. It's got a lot more pigment to it than the Urban Decay one does. But we will see what the longevity of my eyeshadow is like, because I really do love that Urban Decay one. Okay, so for eyeshadows, I've got some choices. So in terms of my cheapest eyeshadow palettes, it's my two Soph Revolution palettes. I'm trying not to blind you with this one. I've got both of them. And for my eyeshadow singles, my cheapest is my Makeup Geek eyeshadow singles. So I think I'm gonna use the palette, and then if necessary, I might take some of these coppery shades in the middle here. Okay, so out of the two Soph palettes, my favourite is her first one. I just really love the colours in it and I feel like I can create more looks with this one. There's more inspiration in this palette, so this is the one that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to take this shade here called Iced Coffee and put that in my crease. There's lots of great colours in this palette to create a nice, warm, everyday brown type of look. There's lots of nice golds and bronzes, coppers. This is the palette that I tend to use if I want to go for those types of shades. Those shades are in the Naked Heat palette, but if you saw that video, I did say that I felt that palette was a bit dark. And I feel as well with the Urban Decay Naked Heat palette that all the looks I create look the same. I'm going to take a smaller crease brush and take the shade Peaches here and just work that more directly into the crease just to darken it up a bit. I'm then going to go for Danger, the shade underneath Peaches put that in the outer V of my eye to create a little bit more dimension. One thing I've noticed immediately with this palette compared to the Urban Decay Naked Heat is that this palette here by Soph doesn't have nowhere near as much fallout. Okay. 
Okay, a shimmer then on the rest of my lid. I'm gonna take this shade here called Copper Coin. I'm gonna try it with a brush first of all and then go in with my finger and see what difference that makes. It is going on okay with the brush. Let's try it with my finger for the other eye. I think I prefer the brush actually. I think I can get a little bit more precision with it. Okay, I like it. I like those colours. I prefer the shimmers in the Soap palette compared to the Naked Heat palette. I feel like they are more vibrant, there's more shimmer to them. They're a lot more subtle in the Naked Heat palette, but if I use a shimmer, I don't want it to be subtle. That's kind of my whole point of using a shimmer shade. Okay, so let's go on to the base now then. So my cheapest foundation is my e.l.f. Flawless Finish Foundation. I'm in the shade Natural. I really like the effect of this foundation. I think this is absolutely lovely and I feel like it's not really spoken about too much. Right, let's start off with one pump. This is a big pump. <laughs> uh, we can make it work, it's okay, it's okay. All right, Beauty Blender to blend all of that in. Move these out the way. <laughs> okay, one pump of that seems to have gone quite far. Now, I do like the finish of this. I don't think it's quite as seamless as the Laura Geller foundation I used in my most expensive makeup video but I do like the finish of this it is really nice cheapest concealer is the elf 16 hour camo concealer now I know some people really don't like this they find it quite heavy quite drying I think I like this I haven't used it in a while but obviously let's give it a go and see what I think I think this is meant to be a dupe for the Tarte shape tape I might have to give that a go in a video, compare them sort of side by side, one on one eye, one on the other. Okay, I feel like that really hasn't covered that dark circle. Might have to go in with a bit more. Okay, a second layer of that seems to have worked a bit better, so let's put some on some blemishes and then we're all done for concealer. Okay, so let's move on to powder then. My cheapest is the Fenty Invisimat Blotting Powder. Now, I know this is still a considered purchase, but I only have two powders, this one and the Laura Mercier, which is more expensive than this one. But I do tend to just use this one with the little sort of sponge. Oh, that needs cleaning. With the little sponge that comes with it, just to sort of touch up any oil on my face throughout the day. But you can use this with a brush and just use it how you would do a normal loose powder. So that's what I'm gonna do. When I use this powder during the day for touching up, sort of removing any excess oil, I really like it. This does exactly what I need it to do but it's not often that I use it like this. So we'll see how this goes. But so far I think it's sort of doing okay. Cheapest contour is my only contour, so it's the NYX contour in the shade Taupe. Cheapest bronzer comes from this palette, this e.l.f. palette, and this is in the shade Saint Lucia, and you get a bronzer and a blush, and I think this is meant to be a dupe for Nars Laguna and Nars Orgasm, so let's give this a go. Is it 
at me or is that not really sort of picking up much pigment? Mm, actually, it is a little bit. Never mind. sure about that I feel like it's a little bit patchy but also not really that pigmented that had to be built up quite a bit hmm not loving that so let's try the blusher from this palette as well is it me or is this not like picking up much pigment at all Okay, so the highlighter is another e.l.f. product and this is the Moonlight Pearls Baked Highlighter. With this highlighter, you do have to scrape off the top layer when you first get it because otherwise you're not going to pick up any product whatsoever. Okay, this is nice. Very subtle. Okay, it's better with a finger. Don't. Okay, let's finish off the eyes then. So the same palette I used on my lid and I'm just going to put the same colours under my eyes. Okay, let's just tidy up the eye look a little bit by taking the shade here. And then fairy lights under the brow bone and in the inner corner of my eye. Right, so for eyeliners, the cheapest ones I have are by Peaches and Cream. I do have three. I've got a sort of bright turquoise blue. But for this eye look, I'm going to use these two here. This one is called Dynasty. And it's just a beautiful burnt orange copper colour and I think that will work quite nicely with this eye look even though it might not stand up too much and then the next shade is called papyrus and that's just a nice nude so I'll put that in my waterline these are so creamy but they don't transfer they last all day long they glide on the lids without tugging really really impressed with these eyeliners Anybody else hold their breath when you do your eyeliner? Okay, yeah, you can't really see that, but I'm just going to apply it anyway. Brows, my cheapest product is the NYX Control Freak. This is just a clear brow gel, and to be totally honest with you, I don't really know what it's supposed to do. Mine is not clear anymore because I use a pencil and then I go in with this. This has turned it a little bit brown. So I'm going to use this. I'm not really sure how much of a difference it's going to make because I'm not really putting on a lot of pigment. But it's my cheapest one, so let's just do that anyway. I guess if you like the pushed up brow trend just using this product on its own or a tinted one of this might be for you I would ideally like my brows filled in a little bit just here and here because that's where they are a little bit sparse I've just curled my lashes so now let's do mascara my cheapest collection lash surge mascara I really really like this mascara I've only ever tried the waterproof version of this um, this is not the waterproof version so let's see how this one holds up this is brand new though, I haven't opened this so it might be a case of this doesn't perform as well as it may do in a couple of weeks once it's sort of dried up a little bit. But let's just see how it works anyway. Oh, immediately compared to called Bare Minerals Strength and Length. Look, it's a round brush, I love a round brush.
They're a bit sticky when doing the second coat. It's not as easy as when I use the Bare Minerals Strength and Length, but I really like these lashes. They're not really that clumpy. I feel like it's separated the lashes quite nicely. I've got a nice lift volume. All right, lastly, it's the lips. So cheapest lip liner is my collection. Collection 2000, this says on it. This is quite old. Pink Heaven lip liner. Really, really like this shade. The pencil is quite tough though. It does drag a little bit, but the, the color is absolutely lovely. If you're all a lot darker than I am though, this probably won't show up on you. And cheapest lipstick is my Sofa Revolution lipsticks. I think these are about four pounds, so they're an absolute bargain. A little bit too glossy for me, so if I blot it down with some tissue or sort of press it into my lips with my fingers, this does work a little bit better. This is in the shade Syrup, so it's a nice browny, peachy nude colour. This is the lipstick I use when I want a nude lipstick. Okay, firstly, the hair has worked. I mean, look at those curls. The parting and the fringe is a little bit dodgy. I did curl it the way that my parting does fall. So maybe the next time I do it, I part it over here because I feel like flipping it over works. Does that look better? I don't know, but I'm impressed that that has worked. I think I'm going to leave it this side because I get a little bit more volume. But um, yeah, just got to iron out a couple of the kinks to do with it. But I'm impressed with how that's worked. I feel like a lion with uh, all this hair. <laughs> okay, so that is the full face of makeup done. So I tried to keep the colour scheme similar to the full face of my most expensive makeup. So what do you guys think? I'm going to zoom you in and you can see a little bit closer how it all looks. Okay, so I've turned the brightness down a little bit. So this is the eyes with the Soph Revolution palette. So similar colours to the Naked Heat I tried to go for. I don't think you can really see the eyeliner that I've used on top, but oh well. I've got that nude eyeliner in the waterline. That's the Soph lipstick as well. Now the e.l.f. bronzer and blush I did struggle with a little bit, but that's the e.l.f. foundation and concealer. So what do you think which one do you prefer i might try and see if i can put up a side by side to directly compare the two so cheapest and most expensive which one do you prefer so i feel like i prefer the look of the full face of cheaper makeup because the full face of the most expensive it felt like there was a lot going on there was a lot going on on the eyes there was a lot of bronze and blush there was a lot on my lips as well so if I was to have worn that on a normal normal day I would have only worn the eyes or the lips together I just felt like it was a lot of makeup I'm not sure if that really kind of came across I feel like this is a lot more comfortable I was a little bit self-conscious with the most expensive makeup whereas with this I feel like this is a bit more wearable even though the colors are quite similar does that kind of make sense? I hope so. I just want to talk you through some of the products that I think are worth it and some of the products that aren't. So the first product that I don't think is worth it, not so much worth the price because I think this is only around £10 anyway, is the Max Factor Smooth Miracle Primer. I feel like a broken record whenever I talk about primers. I don't really like primers, cheap or expensive. They don't do anything so... <sighs> This one doesn't really come down to the price, it just comes down to the fact that it is a primer. The next one that I wasn't that keen on was this e.l.f. bronze and blush duo. I felt like I really had to build up the bronzer on this and even then it felt like it was patchy. So I think I might include this in a shop my stash sometime soon to see if I can kind of make this work. The blush is nicer but again I really had to sort of build that up as well so they're not hugely pigmented. So that is it for the products that I think aren't really worth it. The ones that I do think are worth it, first of all, are these two Soph Revolution eyeshadow palettes. This one in particular, this is my most favourite eyeshadow palette. I absolutely love it. The colours are just beautiful. Yes, they are very warm, so if you prefer cooler tones, then you probably won't really get on with this palette too well. 
but I just absolutely love it. They are so pigmented, they're easy to blend. There's more fallout in the Urban Decay Naked Heat Palette compared to this, which is surprising because this is a quarter of the price, I think. This is definitely worth the money. I really do love this. Another one is the e.l.f. Flawless Finish Foundation. Excellent coverage, excellent finish. I think if you have dry skin though, I think those are the people that don't tend to get on with this foundation, but I have a combination oily skin, so this one seems to work really well for me. I love the bottle as well. It's kind of frosted glass and it feels a bit fancy. The Peaches and Cream eyeliners are excellent as well. Like I said, they are creamy, but they don't transfer. They don't drag on the eye. They're really pigmented, last all day. Excellent colours as well, really exciting, vibrant colours. I would definitely buy some more of these. And I really hope that they expand their shade range on this. I would really like to see a hot pink, a nice dual coloured purple, a really lovely navy blue excellent eyeliners i highly highly recommend these if you have trouble with eyeliners dragging transferring or not lasting very long brilliant eyeliners the fenty invisible Op matte powder although this is my cheapest powder i know that it's not cheap but i do really like this this is just perfect for me for touch-ups during the day when i notice that my t-zone tends to get a little bit oily tap this onto my face and this just instantly gets rid of the oil and the shine gives it a matte look but it doesn't look drying and then the last one that i think is worth it are the soif revolution lipsticks they are a little bit creamy for me but if i blot them down with a tissue or with my finger really work the product into my lips i think these work really well really pigmented excellent lipsticks for four quid can't go wrong okay so i hope you found this video interesting please let me know what makeup look you preferred whether it was the cheaper face of makeup or whether it was the most expensive face i'm really intrigued to see what you think and if you did like this video please give it a thumbs up have a lovely rest of your day and i'll talk to you again in my next video oh also let me know what you think of the hair as well thank you so much for watching guys i'll see you later Bye bye